Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be using one of the most underrated exotics in Destiny history that pretty much no one ever uses, and that is the Eternal Warrior. This exotic was terrible when first released, and it has taken years for Bungie to actually get it up and running and to actually buff it to be more acceptable. And finally, it actually has a reason to be used. The exotic now gives a damage buff up to times 4 when playing normally, and after using your super, and although many will say this is still lackluster, it at least gives players a reason to put this on if you want a one and done exotic for whatever activity you're in. So this is where I come in and show you an endgame build using the following setup along with symmetry to really show you how simple and yet powerful this combo can be. If you've been looking for a reason to use the following, then now's your perfect chance to learn. To start, you're going to want to have Touch of Thunder aspect, which allows users to enhance one out of the four grenades you have available. Then you want Knockout, where critically wounding a target will increase your melee damage and start regaining your health. The Knockout Fragment will be your friend here, as this will keep you alive as long as possible, while dishing out higher melee damage and in-game content. Touch of Thunder is going to allow us to push our Pulse Grenades to do more damage over time, while also giving us Ionic Traces at the same time. Do remember that the grenade did receive a 20% buff, so now is a perfect time to really lean into them. For the fragments, a spark of ions, where defeating a jot of targets create on it traces. A spark of resistance, where while surrounded, you're more resistant to incoming attack by 40%. Spark of shock, where your art grenades jolt targets. And spark of magnitude, which increases the duration of lingering grenades. As the setup is pretty much done, once you have your exotic and mods in play, the fragments can then lead into whatever you have in mind from grenade focus to mini focused or both. Ideally, the build will focus on a bit of both and being a powerhouse in the right scenarios. Thankfully, the build does not require a must have fragment to see it succeed well in, but if you ever want to decide to use it as an end game and need survival at best, then the following provided will give you the best chances available. For the mods and stats section, both Discipline and Strength will play a big part within the build itself, with Resilience coming third but still playing an important part. Discipline at tier 7 is a good level to level out to and stick with, as we will be using the Font of Focus mod for that plus 30 towards our current stat, so overall a tier 10 once in action. This should help with reducing the need to use high spiked armor to achieve your goal as this should be fairly easy to do on your end. Using Pulse Grenades will be the play here, as they will provide a ton of damage and our traces towards us once procced, so keeping this ability pretty flowing for us is a must for endgame content. Personally, with our current stat and our traces combined, we should reach our goal of achieving max efficiency when using Pulse no matter where we are, as we will be always be at tier 10 in some form, and our traces are not hard to come by. Overall, this means that you don't need to invest in other key mods to further help this stat if you don't want to. The strength is the same as we have ours at tier 7, but with Font of Vigor on hand, this will push it to tier 10 over time. With Iona Traces added to the mix, this will ultimately buff the current stat to allow us to use our melee more often in higher endgame content. Do remember that Thunderclap is good for clearing out and one-shotting most enemies in your area, and in terms of effectiveness on endgame content, it can do pretty well against mages and most ultras. I do have the impact induction mod that will further help my discipline stat as well, but ultimately this is only because I had an extra mod slot available to do so. For key armor charge mods, charged up will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play and collect them, and having the stacks on stacks mod will allow us to increase our charge stacks by plus 2 each time we collect an orb of power. From here, you can add on the Harmonic or Arc Siphon mod for creating orbs of power via your weapons, Reaper, and Powerful Attraction mod so that we always have the ability to gather orbs much faster. Afterwards, you can add on the Arc Surge mod if you wish to have your heavy be buffed and ready to be used in endgame content by 7%. Now, this is optional as Eternal Warrior will be giving you an Arc weapon buff but only on kills, while the surge mods will last until your armor charges dissipate. Either way, having a time dilation mod is a must for our armor charges duration to be extended, and then lastly, having the heavy ammo finder mod, reserves, and scavenger mods will make it so that you always have heavy ammo freely accessible. One last thing though, Ashes to Acid is also required just to make the exotic secondary nature more active while playing. 
Now, lastly, the weapons being used will need to be Arc. So, Symmetry, the Arc Exotic Scout Rifle, is a great example of this. The following weapon is a very underrated exotic that you don't tend to see unless you play PvP at times, as its out mode is very deadly in the specific game modes. In PvE, it's got good range and damage built into its rapid fire frame, which makes it very easy to use if you want to stick far back and pick targets off. Its out mode, on the other hand, is where the weapon succeeds the most in, as its dynamic change effect allows the weapon to go from a fast firing weapon to a slow but heavy hitting scout in seconds. The Arc Seeker mode will do increased damage against others, semi track targets, and also partially refill your magazine based on the number of charges you have on it. It's basically getting stronger and stronger the more kills you get, and in high end game content, this is where the exotic can shine. From testing, combining this with Eternal Warrior and having the catalyst applied so we can hold a times 20 arc charge, I was eating through champion's health by taking a quarter of the health away from each shot applied. Not only that, but its alt mode on top of the times 4 surge when active is actually perfect with how hard hitting it can be in a few seconds. Minor, major, mini bosses and bosses alike, the following combo is deadly but highly dangerous to use. Um, Actually surprised, I haven't seen players in PvP start to use this combo yet, or even more often with how good it actually is. For heavy, nothing specific is required here as this will depend on what you will face. If doing endgame with this build, then the hothead with the following combo is great and easy to use setup for all users involved. If you want something that incorporates the damage buildup that Eternal Warrior does provide, then an arc machine gun like this Swarm or the 7 Serra Swarm are particularly good. The Swarm now can be gone from Zavala, while the Seventh Seraph can be gone from Zer once on sale. Never in my life have I ever thought about using an Eternal Warrior with how bad it used to be, ever. The following off the players an overshield upon using your Fist of Havoc, and that was it. And while this might be good if the Fist of Havoc ability was a one and done super, this wasn't the case in Destiny, and it rightfully deserved to be bullied. However, now my opinions for the Zodic has changed to a more welcoming side of it, and honestly, its changes aren't meta-defining, but it's appealing now nonetheless. Using your super will not only give you an overshield after your use, but will also offer you a times 4 arc weapon surge buff as well. This is where the appeal for me to use the Zodic has popped up, as the damage bonus you get is a lot higher than what the free surge mods can provide, and on top of that, this damage buff becomes active while getting our kills as well. It's this one simple change that has made the Zotic go from an F tier to a simple B to A tier at best. I believe this is important to share as many people still think it's an outright bad Zotic, but the damage buff, overshield, and strength of Fist of Havoc can make it an amazing room clear monster in normal to GM level areas. In fact, I used this in GMs and it worked out pretty damn well and it held up no matter what content it was in. One thing to note is that the damage buff you get is on a timer, around 10 seconds, and if you want to keep this going, you must have a weapon that hits hard and fast. This is why ideally symmetry with his out mode is ideal, as the two timers do match each other, but the damage as well is incredible at max stacking. Then when it comes to the ability region, this is where the flexibility is allowed for the player, as you don't need to add on a surge mod to help bolster the weapon damage further. Although, I still went with this to help my heavy weapon out until my stacks start going. Overall, the exotic change has allowed the exotic to be more reliable if you'd like to change things up and want an exotic that can be put on and not need to invest so much into. With the ideal setup, you can run the havoc in a number of content and it's not limited down to one feature anymore. Now, the exotic encourages players to do more, rather than wait for your super and be done with it. But ultimately, this will be down to you to decide on whether it's worth using or not. So what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub bar here. I'll leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.